Thank you so much for tuning into Destiny. We know that as you receive grace in super abundance and the gift of righteousness, you're absolutely going to reign in life. I want to thank you for your monthly support and invite you out to Destiny where you'll get a word that's going to set you free and change your life. Get ready for the favor of God in your life this year. Amen. Amen. Today, I want to talk to you on this topic real briefly, releasing the king in you. Say that to the person next to you. Say, release the king in, inside of you. You know that the Bible describes that every human being has a person living on the inside of them, their human spirit, that is made in the image and likeness of God. Genesis chapter one, look what it says. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. Every human being is been, has been made in the image and likeness of God. On the inside of us, our human spirit, we're tripartite beings. Every person on the earth is made of three parts. You are spirit, which is eternal, which came from the breath of God. You possess a soul, which is your mind, will, intellect, and emotions. And you live inside of an earth suit called a body. This body is not the real you. The real you is your spirit. The real true you is healed. The true, the real you is perfect on the inside. Now, when you get born again, you get a new, a brand new spirit made just like God. Now, watch this. That new, that true you on the inside is not bound by any addictions. It doesn't, it's not bound by destructive habits. The true you is an overcoming you. The true you is more than enough to overcome any challenge, any, any difficulty in life. The true you is made after the image and likeness of God and cannot be stopped by anything that's in the world. Now, the true you is, is your spirit and it's confident, it's secure. Your, the true you is talented, it's creative. The true you is disciplined and focused. The true you is just like God. Isn't that what the Bible said? Let us make man after our own image. Now, watch this. But the true you, your real spirit that's on the inside of you, the born again you, even though it's alive, it won't come forth unless you do something. And the Bible lets us know what that is. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, Romans chapter 12, Paul gives us the key to bringing the true you forth. Every one of us have this spirit. And once you get born again, this true spirit is in you, but it's predestined to come forth. 
just like a butterfly. Here, watch this. Look what this passage says. Uh, Paul writes it in Romans. He says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That word transformed right there. Do y'all see that? That word transformed is the word metamorpho. Metamorpho. Say metamorpho. What that word means is where, it's where we get our word metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is what happens to 80% of the insects in the earth. They go through a metamorphosis process. What you can really plainly see it in is, is in a caterpillar. A caterpillar, which is, you know, like a little lowly crawling, not real significant looking insect, kind of just crawls and eats on the leaves and can't move quickly. You ever seen caterpillars? Kind of fuzzy and kind of insignificant. But, but God has put on the inside of the caterpillar a beautiful butterfly. But in order for that butterfly, which is already inside of the caterpillar to come out, it has to go through this transformation or a metamorphosis. On the inside of you, what God has designed is for that spirit, the true you, to come forth. But it doesn't come forth like it does on a butterfly. It comes forth like in a cocoon. It comes forth by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind is what the metamorphosis process is for humanity. The great spirit, this spirit that's disciplined, this spirit that is the true you, the victorious you, the overcoming you, the head only and not the tail you, the blessed you is alive on the inside of you, but to bring him forth, to bring her forth, it takes a transformation or a metamorphosis, and that metamorphosis occurs by simply renewing your mind. Renewing your mind means simply changing your thoughts to God's thoughts. What God has done is put himself on the inside of us, a victorious self, an overcoming self, a, a, a self that is healed to bring all this greatness out on the inside of you. The Bible gives us the great key is just simply renewing your mind to what God says. And so that's what destiny is all about. That's really what this church is about. And that's really what church is supposed to be about is to help you to begin to change your thinking to think like God thinks about you. You know that a whole lot of people may have a negative impression of you, but that doesn't really matter. It matters what God thinks about you. And God thinks that you've been made victorious. God thinks that you're more than an overcomer. God knows that he's made you to be the head only and not the tail. He's made you to be above only and not beneath. He's blessed you coming and going. You say, but Pastor Lee, I don't seem to be experiencing that. Here's the key right here. The key is many people have thoughts like this. Well, you know, I'll never have my life changed. You know, I, uh, Pastor Lee, I'll, because you don't know my past, you don't know what I've done, you don't know. I, I don't think God will be able to forgive me for all the things that I've done. Friend, I'm telling you, those are wormy thoughts. Those are the thoughts that keep us entrapped in poverty, the, the thoughts that keep us entrapped in sickness, that keep us entrapped in lack and poverty. Those types of thoughts, those are wormy thoughts. But the Bible is outlined with all types of good news about who you really are. And the Bible lets us know in Ephesians, in Ephesians it says, put on this new thinking, put on this, this renewed spirit. Put it on. In other words, you have to, it's not up to God to do it. Many people are sitting around waiting for God to do something for him when he's already done it all. That's what the finished work means. At the cross, Christ has already accomplished everything for humanity that humanity needs. God is, we're, God is no longer, we're, we're, mankind is no longer waiting on God to do something. God is waiting on man to believe what he said and take what he's already provided for him. Are y'all listening to me in this place? Now, thoughts like, I can't take that promotion, or I'm not qualified, are wormy thoughts. Thoughts like this, I'll never rise much higher in life, and I've come from the wrong family, from the wrong background, maybe the wrong nationality. If I was a different color or had a different education or if I'd born, been born to a different family, all those are wormy thoughts. God made you just like you are. And God birthed you just for this time because there's something great on the inside of you right now that this world needs. 
right now on the inside of you is greatness, seeds of greatness, destiny that God's placed on the inside of you. And all you have to do to bring them out is to begin to change your thinking. Hit the person next to you and say, this is awesome news. We've just got to change our thinking. Now, the key to all this is God isn't going to do it for you. You do it for yourself just simply by changing your thoughts. In other words, the Bible outlines very clearly for us what God has planned for us. God wants you to live an abundant life. A blessed life, not a just barely getting by life, not a life that, that you're just stuck in a rut and not enjoying life. This is what my, my dad had to do a number of years ago. My father here, I see him here on the front row. But my father years ago, was, uh, he, was born to, uh, to, he was born to a single mom. He never knew his father growing up. And as a teenager, he, he found out who his father was and as a teenager went and paid money to have his name changed to Stoke to Stokes. He never grew up in a positive environment. All the people, all his friends around him, either he'll tell you they're either dead or in prison. And so he grew up and his mother worked all the time. She's with the Lord now, but grandmother worked and she did domestic type of work and cleaning homes and that sort of thing. And so my dad wasn't raised by either of his parents. He essentially raised himself but he realized early on that I want more for my life. I don't want to go and end up in prison and I don't want to end up in jail. I don't want to end up dead at an early age. So he did exactly what I'm describing to you. He decided I've got to change my thinking. My father went on to, to uh, go to college. He went to college. He's one of the first people in our family to go to college, graduated. But then after he graduated, he went on back to college again and got his master's degree. Went back to college and got more education. Finally, they said, get out of here. You're too smart now. My dad, I'm just kidding. But my dad was the president. He just recently vice president of GTCC here in, in Greensboro, North Carolina. We were able to grow up and think bigger thoughts and greater thoughts because he did exactly what I'm describing to you. Decided to put on new thinking, change his thinking and not be affected and consumed by the environment that was around him. And that's exactly what the butterfly does. The butterfly builds a new environment called a cocoon. The, the butterfly spits this cocoon out and inside of this environment, now that what's on the inside of him is able to come forth. And that's what will happen to you as you begin on a daily basis to just begin to change your thinking and realize you're not supposed to live a lowly life. You're not supposed to live a barely get by life. You're not supposed to live a sick and broke down life. You're not supposed to go week to week trying to just barely get by. God has created you for greatness. God has created you to be the head only and not the tail. God's created you to be above only and not beneath. Bless coming and bless going. And so rather than saying thoughts it's like, well, I could never lose this weight or I'll never be able to get an education. I'll never be able to do that. No, you've got to change your thoughts to start thinking like this. I am the head only and not the tail. I am blessed. My best days are ahead of me and not behind. I will see my children go to school. I will live a debt-free life. I will visit great places in the earth and I will be a blessing to my children. It's so amazing as a result of what my dad did in changing his thinking, we were able to grow up thinking bigger, able to grow up thinking and expecting more. My, uh, I, and I hope you don't mind, I just wanna share with you some examples. My brother, my baby brother back there, he works here at the ministry and he runs our television, he runs our sound and just a great, great, really my best friend. But my brother, Minister Mo Stokes, he, years ago, he got hooked up with some wrong people and made some bad connections and ended up addicted to crack cocaine. Crack cocaine, and I'll never forget, he came and told me, uh, I was living in Orlando, Florida, and he said, Lee, you, uh, you won't believe this, this is really shocking, but I made some poor decisions and I got messed up, I'm, I'm on crack cocaine. Well, why I'm telling you this is not to embarrass him, this good news about it is, he never, never went through any type of rehab. He's, we moved here as a result of him. 
Honestly, we started our church, we were planning to go to Charlotte, North Carolina, and we said, no, my brother is in Greensboro, let's go to Greensboro, let's go to Greensboro. And all my brother did was started coming to church every week, never missing a service, never had to go to rehab, changed his entire life. Now, he's completely free from any drug addiction, and... He helps run the ministry here of people who, to help peep other people who are addicted to drugs, who have habits and destructive habits. Now he's helping lead that ministry and helping set other people free. Come on, somebody. Why? Because he began to change his thinking. Somebody slap the person a high five next to you. Just tell them, changing our thinking is a good thing. My wife, my wife, Shanae Stokes, she, uh, she was married, both of us were previously married, and she was married to a, a husband who didn't appreciate her. She got married at a young age, and, and her first husband used to push her around and slap her around and tell her that she was stupid and ugly and never amount to anything and would never be anything. And, and the amazing thing is, when she tells the story about it, she talks about how when he finally said, I'm tired of you, I'm leaving, get out of here, and actually he put her out. Put her out. He had gotten another woman pregnant. Are y'all listening to me? And this whole time she said, I was still trying to hold on to him because I thought that I couldn't do anything better. I thought that I couldn't have better in life. I want you to know that finally she said, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. He's gotten another woman pregnant. I'm finished with him. Do you know today that she runs our ministry? She is a CFO of our ministry. Not that dumb, a multi-million dollar in, uh, ministry. She's the one who plans all the furnishings, all the colors. She does all that, manages and runs the staff. I'm telling you, if somebody's told you growing up or somebody you married made a bad decision, who's told you you're dumb, let me tell you, it doesn't matter what they think about you. It matters what God thinks about you. So the man that was pushing her around and thought she wasn't any good, I ended up seeing, getting her and seeing, not her, seeing her not as trash, but as a great treasure. She is a blessing in my life. She is so beautiful to me. And the amazing thing is, when she began to change her thinking, the day was when we first moved to the city and she, we would have her speak sometimes and she was terrified. She was terrified to grab the mic. She didn't want to say anything. Now it's amazing. She leads the women's ministry. She preaches and teaches and, and leads all because she did exactly what I'm talking about, changing her thinking to what God says about her. Hit the person next to you and say, God has bigger plans for you than you do. <laughs> in the Bible, in the Bible, Gideon, Gideon in Judges chapter 6, Gideon, the, the whole... The, the, the army of Israel had been attacked and they were attacked by the Midianites and everything looked really bad. I mean, the people were slaves and, and everything looked really bad and God always has somebody to deliver. And so he, uh, you know, this man, uh, Gideon, is hiding up in the mountains. He's hiding in the wheat, uh, amongst the wheat fields and he's hiding up there. And an angel appears to him and says, the Lord is with you, you great man of valor. And of course, I imagine Gideon started looking around going, who in the world are you talking about? Because he was running, he was hiding, and he was terrified. But God said, the Lord is with you, you great man of valor. Thing is, he was terrified. But notice, God saw him as a mighty man of valor. God sees you different than people see you. God sees you different than anybody else sees you because he's the one that made you. And so even if your spouse, your teachers, your friends turn their back on you and say that you have no value, God says you're a mighty woman of valor. God says to you, destiny, you're a great people of value, valor. You have great future in store for you. God has great future for you. Even when it looks like you have no strength on your own, Gideon started complaining. He said, Lord, you've got to be kidding. It can't be me. I come from the smallest tribe and I'm the weakest in my tribe. God, you know, that's wormy talk. He started looking at himself and saying, there's no way that could be me. There's no way I can be the one who can deliver my people. Friend, I'm telling you that God has more in store for your future than you could possibly imagine. It doesn't matter what's happened in your past, how bad you've blown it. You made, made some bad decisions, ended up on drugs or in an addiction. God still sees you with a great future he'll turn it around and turn that mess that you've made into a great ministry that you'll begin to minister to others and be a blessing to those who are going through some of the same things that you're going through the whole point is this 
people may not see your value, but just like that sculptor, God sees your value. You wouldn't be alive if you weren't very valuable to God. God has great purpose and destiny and plans for your life. And regardless of what anybody else thinks about it, God has great things in store for you. But the key is changing your thinking. Hit the person next to you. Just tell them right there. Say, God's got greater in store for you than you could possibly imagine. You may be in a situation where you're facing great adversity right now, where you're facing great challenge in life, where you're looking at your situation and going, I don't even know how I'm going to pay my rent. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know how I've made some bad decisions, Pastor Lee, and, and I don't know how God's going to turn this thing around. Well, there was a man in the Bible, like uh, his name was Jacob, and he was kind of like that stump. People didn't value him anymore because he had made some poor decisions, and, and, and his name really meant gangster, sucumber, trickster liar. He had made some bad decisions in life and, and things weren't going well for a period of time. But God looked at that man, same man and changed his name. He called him, he said, no longer are you called Jacob, you're called Israel. He called him a prince. He called him a king, even when everybody else was calling him a crook, calling him a, a mobster. What I'm telling you is, even if you've made bad decisions, even if you've made some poor choices, God still has a great future because he doesn't see you like everyone else sees you. The key is changing your thinking. Tell the person next to you, we got to change our thinking. This reminds me of, of me. Years ago, years ago, I was working for a, a large church in Columbus, Ohio. Rod Parsley was the church. Uh, the church was World Harvest Church. And, and they had me do this. They were doing a television spot. It was a huge church. And I was the youth pastor. And they sat me down to, uh, to, do, to talk about the youth ministry. I was so nervous. I was so terrified that it, they took a whole day trying to shoot a two-minute spot for me. Finally, they gave up. They said, forget it. We can't, he can't do it. He can't do it. It is amazing now. It, it really shattered my, it shattered my confidence. I thought, there's no way. How can I do I can't do it. I was just too nervous and too afraid. My parents will tell you, as a little boy, I was so terrified when, when they'd have little church plays that I'd be the one who'd stand there and look and then just stand in front of everybody and cry. My little brother, of course, he was bold. He'd take everybody's lines. But I couldn't say three words. But one day I realized God has much more in store. God has greater in store for me. And there's a king that's living on the inside of me that needs to come out. And I had to do exactly what I'm sharing with you. Begin to change my thinking about life. Begin to change my thinking about who God said I was. God let me know there's more in store for you than just working for someone else. You can lead your own. You can change Greensboro. You can change this city if you'll realize that there's greatness on on the inside of you. Will you hit that person next to you and say, you can change the world because of the greatness on the inside of you. Oh, some of y'all ain't telling them. Hit them on the other side. Tell them there's greatness on the inside of you and you can change the world. The children of Israel throughout the whole Old Testament were being attacked over and over, they were God's chosen people and still are. And throughout the whole Old Testament, they're constantly in rebellion. They're, they turned their backs on God because they, they didn't believe in him and things were going on. At this one time, and they, they had been captured again. Their king had been killed. And the people were panicking. This is in the book of Micah. In the book of Micah. Look what God says to them in Micah chapter 4 and verse 9 in the King James Version. It says this. The people were crying because their, their kids were being killed and all kinds of horrible things were happening to the people as a whole. But look what God says to him. He says, now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? They were saying, we're looking for a king. We're looking for somebody to lead us. We're looking for somebody who can help us. We're looking, and God says to him, the king's on the inside of you. On the inside of you, just like on the inside of that wood, God has placed a king on the inside of you. Just like on the inside of the caterpillar, there's a beautiful butterfly. On the inside of you today is a person, a person who will bring you to great position in life, who will bring you to a place where you'll reign in life. Who is that? It's Jesus on the inside of you. Are y'all listening to me in this place? I'm telling you, regardless of what you're facing, regardless of the decisions that you've made in the past, you still have a great future through Jesus Christ. Do y'all receive that today? Is that good news to you? 
Well, with every head bowed and every eye closed, every head bowed and every eye closed, no one moving around, my help is coming. Destiny is a predetermined purpose and a place to which something or someone is journeying or sent. Most people live their entire lives having never discovered their purpose and never fulfilling destiny. You are custom made for your God-given purpose. Purpose precedes production. Purpose solves problems. Order this five-part series with your gift of $25 by logging on to the web at leestokes.org or by visiting Destinations Bookstore here at the church or by calling Destiny at 336-235-0880. Your God-given passions coupled with your God-given gifts coincide with your God-given purpose. Friend, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch this broadcast today. I am certain that you got something today that's going to change your life forevermore and, and cause you to begin to win in life in ways you've never won before. If by chance you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to invite you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Just say this prayer with me if you want him to be your Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and be my savior. Friend, it's really that simple. If you prayed that prayer right now, you're saved. You can just throw your hands up and say right now, thank you, Jesus, I'm saved. It really is that simple. But friend, here's the most important thing. You need to be in a church where you can hear the word of God and begin to walk out all that he has for you. Begin to realize all the great things that he has for you. And I'm telling you, I just don't know of a better church than destiny for you to come and be involved in. I want to invite you to come out to our services, the, the times and the and the location is on the screen, but just come on out and see us. Log on to our website and find out more about us. I promise you God has great things in store for you. Friend, he's not mad at you. Your past is completely gone and God has a great future in store for you. He wants you to win. He wants you to absolutely be on top. So come on out and be with us at any of our services. I look forward to meeting you. I look forward to seeing you on top. And also I look forward to seeing you right here on this same broadcast next week at this same time. I'm telling you, you better get ready to win because God has great things in store for you. I look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you.